For this review, I thought it was appropriate to surround myself with two things that kind of remind me of the subject matter. Cars and babies. Sometimes it's best to just not ask. Baby Driver is a new film. <laughs> I'm seriously, I'm, I'm sorry. I've just got to get rid of that thing. Baby Driver is a new film written and directed by Edgar Wright, who is one of the greatest filmmakers in the history of filmmaking. If you're unfamiliar with his works, then shame on you. You should watch Shaun of the Dead. You should watch Hot Fuzz, The World's End, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This guy is an absolute genius and one thing i love so much about his movies is he has his own unique style if you were to watch one of his films and it didn't have his name at the start you would know it was an edgar wright film because he just has his own unique brand you know kind of like sam raimi david fincher a whole bunch of uh, directors who you know their works when you're watching them and this guy's stuff is just, I, I just love it so much, but I'll get into that a bit later. So this film is about a getaway driver nicknamed Baby, played by Ansel Elgort, who quite frankly sounds more like a Game of Thrones character. And Baby is the best in the business. This guy, if you like the kind of movies of, you know, someone who is really good at what they do, like maybe a little too good, this movie's for you. So he's involved with a group of bank robbers led by a guy named Doc, played by Kevin Spacey. And you kind of learn that Baby is in this to pay off a debt. And Doc is giving him like one last job to do before he can leave the business. But of course, things don't turn out quite as easy for Baby as that. Because when someone's really good at something, you don't want to let them go. Baby falls in love with a waitress at a coffee shop named Deborah, who's played by Lily James, who you might be familiar with from the Cinderella live action remake that came out not that long ago. And all these two want is to get in a car and drive away, listen to music and live happily ever after. But you know, the criminal underworld, they don't make things easy for people. So look, I went into this movie, you know, obviously, like I said, Edgar Wright, I love his stuff. He is a really big influence on my own work as a director, which, it's always difficult because you want to emulate what he does, but then you're like, you know, people are just going to say, hey, you're ripping off Edgar Wright. Not cool. So I went into this thinking to myself, this could very well be one of the best movies of this year, and holy crap, of course it was. So for starters, yeah, look, it's just got Edgar Wright's brand written all over it, and there was just, there were things that... You know, even this guy, I was surprised at just the level of genius he brought to this. You've probably heard, if you've seen reviews and stuff, about the soundtrack in this movie. Now, it's not so much the songs that they use, but the way that they're implemented in the film. They sort of become part of the film in a way. For instance, in the beginning, there's a bank robbery scene, and when the car pulls up, the music's playing, but everything happens to beats of the music. When the other three get out of the car, the car doors all shut in time with the music. Gunfights in the movie, all ha like every shot is in time with the music. Even like a snare roll, you'll have a machine gun fire, you know, things like that. It was just so freaking clever. And not only that, it features an opening credit sequence that is going to be up there with the greatest opening credit sequences of all time. Uh, it involves baby going from the criminal hideout to a coffee shop and back all in one long take which I think I read somewhere it took like 28 takes or something like that but as he's walking along listening to music keep an eye out on the background because he's listening to the song Harlem Shuffle but quite often there's graffiti on the walls and on signposts and stuff which are the lyrics of whatever part of the song as he's walking past and it I'm just sitting there in this theater with the biggest grin on my face because it was just so ingenious and unique and different and that's what I love about Edgar Wright's movies. They're not like anything you've seen before. So in terms of the cast and everything, look, yeah, everyone delivered really top performances. I loved all the characters in it. The bad guys in this film, they weren't like over the top bad guys. They were kind of subtle but still threatening. I mean, Kevin Spacey's character, you know, he wasn't like 
an aggressive type, but he still meant business and he was still kind of feared. Ansel Elgort as Baby, I thought he was great. He, you're given this information about his upbringing where he had kind of a troubled childhood and I like that he wasn't totally messed up or anything like that, but he still wasn't a nice guy, if you know what I mean. He sort of balanced that blend of good and bad, I guess, and yeah, it came across in such a great way, I dug him. Lily James as Deborah, she was great. She was just this ray of sunshine in his life that he needed, and I thought she was great. I mean, I don't know, something about Lily James, she's just always great to watch. And the supporting cast, John Hamm, Jamie Foxx, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Look, everyone delivered a great job. I, I thought the characters were enjoyable, everyone sort of had their own personalities, and yeah, it was great. But one of the main standouts of this film is the stunt work. Oh my god. The car stunts in this, and car chases, fight scenes, like, oh man, these are up there with some of the most exciting car stunt scenes I've seen in a long time, and from what I've read, apparently a lot of this stuff, well, pretty much all of it was real. I mean, some of the things you see in the trailer, like that bit where the car's driving down the alleyway and it does a 180 turn, almost hitting a truck, you know, I thought to myself, there's got to be some trickery done in there, but apparently it was all real, so... Pfft. Go figure. And just everything about this was a joy to watch. The editing, the cinematography, like, just, yeah, I just, it was so good. And, oh, while I really wanted to give this movie a 10 out of 10, look, it wasn't quite perfect. Now, mainly because, look, the opening scenes of this film were so mind-blowing and entertaining, and it just, it really set a bar for the rest of the film that, it didn't quite reach it until maybe the third act. The third act was really good, but it was one of those cases where, look, there wasn't a boring moment in the entire film, don't get me wrong, but when you start a movie that strong, it just didn't quite maintain it uh, throughout. And I just kind of thought the movie could have had a few more Edgar Wrightisms, if you will. I mean, there were plenty throughout, but... You know, maybe it was because this was his first movie that he's written on his own. Maybe it was because it was an American co-production. I just kind of feel maybe if it was a solely British film, it might have still had more of that Edgar Wright flavor, but yeah, it was, yeah, it was still good. And the only other thing I thought the character of Deborah, played by Lily James, just, ah, oh, she was just a little bit one-dimensional. I mean, every other character just had a lot going for them, but... She was, uh, I wouldn't say she was there just to be a love interest. I mean, she did serve a purpose in the story and stuff, but maybe uh, yeah, she could have just been a little deeper, I guess. But look, those are minor criticisms when you compare how entertaining this movie was. It was so much fun to watch. I loved every minute of it. I am definitely going to be owning it on Blu-ray the day it comes out, and I'm giving Baby Driver a 9.5 out of 10. So thank you from all of us for watching this review. I'm really sorry. And I want to give a quick shout out to some really cool YouTube channels that I've been chatting to lately, some really cool people. I want to say hi to Steve and Adam from Screen Crawler. You guys, I love what you're doing. I'm going to put a link to your channel down below. So if you guys want to see some really entertaining reviews, then definitely check that out. And also Corey and Steve from Rewind Replay. Thank you guys for dropping by and sharing some thoughts on films and stuff. You guys rock. They're fellow Australian YouTubers, so yeah, good to see some local talent doing something cool. And thank you to everybody who's been subscribing to my channel lately, I really appreciate it. Definitely want more subscribers, so if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button down below the video. Just, just smash it. Actually, probably don't smash it because you might break something, so just, just click on it. Alrighty, so coming up soon, I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. In the meantime, if you've seen Baby Driver, let me know what you thought of it. Did you love it as much as I did? Drop me some comments either here or on Facebook. All the social media links are in the description below because I like to talk about movies and I would love to talk about movies with you. I'll catch you next time. Bye! Click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest movie reviews. Skynet will be taking over any day now, so what have you got to lose? Yeah.